to officially call this meeting, uh, the September 16, 2019 meeting of Alberta City Council to order. Um, are there any agenda additions or any changes? There better not be any additions. Thank you. Thank you. I would uh, move approval of the agenda as we go. Second. 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 Um, heard a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Any more people may please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're now the communications part of the agenda. Uh, is there anybody here that's here to speak to any item on the agenda? Please name your, please your name and address. Seeing none, I think we're going to move to the consent agenda. Um, any items that need to be pulled off this routine item, this routine agenda? I move approval of the consent agenda as presented. Thank you, Scott. Is there a second? I do have one comment. In the minutes, a very small thing, but it, there is a difference to be made. On the comment about the Cornell lunch buddies at the end, it's actually brunch buddies. Because we already have lunch buddies at the elementary school. So we do need to make that change in differentiation, that the new program is the brunch buddies. That's all I have. <coughs> we have a second to Scott's motion. I'll second. Uh, thank you, Eric. Um, other than that one Sorry. change for the lunch and the, the brunch and the lunch buddies, um, we're ready to vote on the consent agenda. All okay with that? Aye. 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 Opposed? Going to the public hearing section of the agenda. The public hearing the proposed amendment number six to the Mumford Urban Renewal Plan. Express in force. This is um, basically put in place so that if we choose to repay our internal borrowing with TIF dollars, we're able to do that. It also gives us the ability to um, use TIF dollars to extend utilities to the north side of the tracks in that area. Um, and then I increased um, the amount for the pool should we ever decide to do that in the future. So the reason I did all of those items is it costs money every time we amend this. Um, and they always ask me potential projects that could be in the future. It doesn't hurt us. We don't have to do them. So I added those items, but not necessarily plan in place. But uh, the major one is to be able to utilize the to pay ourselves back. Okay, I officially open a public hearing on the proposed amendment number six. But uh, is there any, anybody here to, to speak to that? Okay, then I will close the public hearing and we'll move to item G1. The resolution. Should be read for the public record. You don't have to. Okay, uh, just. Reference resolution 9 16 2019. You didn't get anything this quarter, did you? Anything? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want to make sure we're not. <laughs> 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 okay. It's all legit. <laughs> yeah, very limited. Okay. And clarification, just making sure that everybody understands this isn't us actually doing this stuff. This is us setting the table so that if we do, we have other matters Correct. to pay for. It. Um, so the process is you have to have an urban renewal plan before you can utilize tax increment financing dollars. Um, this plan can be amended, and this is the sixth amendment to do that. In that case, I would move approval of the proposed amendment to the urban renewal plan. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. I think this is a roll call vote on this resolution. Right. Autobush. Yes. West. Yes. Wiesler. Yes. Herman. Yes. Rose. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, moving back to E2, public hearing on plans and specifications, proposed form of contract, and estimate of cost of construction of the 8th Avenue Northwest Quiet Zone, City of Auburn, Iowa. I to officially open the public hearing part. And I will close the public hearing. Um, Chris, anything to add here? Um, no, as I stated in my report, this thing has kind of been all over the place. Um, the engineer's report obviously is um, estimate was uh, just over thirty-six thousand dollars. It started at seventy-five, went up to one hundred twenty-five, then back down to thirty-six four. But given the um, 
many climate. Um, the fact that we only received two bidders, you have to deal with the railroad. I was expecting more than 36 Fort, not necessarily 66, but um, at the same time, we don't necessarily have time to rebid this project in the spring and hope that we get more bidders. Uh, we do have $75,000 budgeted, but if Lynn County moves forward with um, Mount Road, First Street, in the spring, we need this road or this intersection to open for detours. So, um, even though, like I said, it's a lot more than the engineer's estimate, it's still less than what we had originally planned, so staff would recommend approval of moving forward with this project. Is there a reason why that was so low? I mean, surely this has been done several times other places. Lack of bidders. We only that's, had two. That's the reason. Um, so, and, and we're seeing this on the community wellness center too, but <coughs> everybody with the wet spring is behind schedule, so nobody's bidding work. And there's another project on here that we're talking about, just some sewer work, but we couldn't get anybody to answer our phone calls. Um, one company, Rotor Ruger, returned our phone call, but that's if we helped them do the work. So it's it's a rough bidding environment right now, and the fact that we only received two um, was disappointing, but not a surprise. And like I said, throwing the railroad into the mix, the extra traffic control that they will have to do because of it. Well, that stands. I mean, it's a railroad. Yeah, it's just a like, zone. It's just you're just always surprised. Railroad, so. yeah. <coughs> it sounds to me like it's mainly. Contractor. For the most part, yes. So the most, I mean, <clears throat> so the, it looks like the vast majority of the paperwork related to this one is the railroad tracks. Or is the railroads paperwork? Is that like all the? Like there's a lot. Just of like it, the yes. and there's pages another permit that has to be filed on. Okay. Because I had an issue with some of the language, but if it's their paperwork, it's their paperwork. Not pertinent to. The carrying out of it just wait until you try to go underneath. And that's when they're really yeah. Well, yes, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> we'll see the power and whatnot over there. Um, yeah. I mean, given the time constraints and the fact that it came in less than we had originally budgeted anyway, I think we are where we are. So I would go ahead and move approval of the bid as presented. I agree. I'll second. This is uh, so we're. Clarifying this, this first one will be the applications <coughs> engineer's estimate. So, 9 16 2019 and the public hearing are associated with the plan and specifications. Um, we'll get back to the bid here shortly. Okay, so what am I doing? Uh, it's your motion. Approving the okay. steps. It's scrolling for a day and a half. The motion would be G2. a resolution. G2. I'm going to go ahead and move approval of motion uh, G2 there. Second I'll second, okay. yes. Okay. Step okay. Second. All right. okay. So with that clarification of the motion, I'll leave it to vote. Herman, yes. Rob Bush? Yes. Rose? Yes. West? Yes. Weasley? Yes. Next step. Public hearing to amend to the comprehensive plan and official zoning map to rezone certain property from Ag Agricultural District to Limited Industrial District from a public use overlay. I've officially opened the public meeting, the public uh, hearing for that. Seeing no one here to speak to that, I want to close the public hearing. And we'll proceed to F1. Chris, do you have anything to add? No. Um, as you know, we received some feedback um, when we started doing some work out there. Obviously, nobody's here to talk about it, but uh, what we're planning to do is rezone this limited industrial because we need the building coverage, the purpose service, the <coughs> requirements that are on the underlying zoning, but in order to assure residents that we're not opening this up to all limited industrial uses, we would put the public use overlay district on so that there would have to be a public hearing in the future if the council ever decided to want to change that. Uh, not impossible, but they would have to go through a, a process, obviously, to, to make that happen. So this is um, as safe and as limited as I can get it for individuals. 
but it does make sense with the railroad tracks being where they are. Um, the Ag is a transitional district for the city. Um, so, dirt works uh, done and hoping to start leaves. Got one question. You did mention your report that um, they got leaves this fall. You mentioned again. Mm -hmm. Uh, private individuals dropping off leaves, you want that opening up this soon or? Probably not, okay. just because we um, we don't have everything set up. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of gravel out there and, and people, not that we couldn't, I guess, but uh, we would like to have some gates. We would like to be able to put cameras out there and monitor. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, not quite ready for public yet. No. Yeah. Right. But still, yeah. that's, that's so we do have the, yeah. the composting area ready, and, and like I said, we'll be able to take the leaves on. It's just um, probably next spring. Maybe yeah. next spring slash summer is when we can probably get people coming to the site. So, I move approval of the first reading of Ordinance Nine Dash Sixteen Dash A, amending the comprehensive to rezone certain property from ag to <coughs> industrial with public use of the land. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Scott. Bring the vote on this resolution. Roll call, please. Who? Ronald Bush. Yes. West. Yes. Weasler. Yes. Herman. Yes. Rose. Yes. Thank you. We're officially to F2 now. Um, or is it a <coughs> Second reading. So the only thing that I put in my report is um, I haven't had a chance to talk to Mrs. Billingsley, but I was able to pull up her site. This won't help her situation. And there will be others, but it will not help. I think there's possibilities that would allow them to potentially park in their front yard with this ordinance, but it won't be year round. Um, I expressed this to you, Tom, before the meeting. I think if you're wanting to open that up, up to year round, then I would probably push this back to planning and zoning because I think that's a pretty large leap from what they're recommending. Um, otherwise, the ordinance, like I said, is. I really think what should be looked in is this corner lot. You, you should specify what's front and what side. Instead uh, of having two fronts. I, That's what needs to be done for a corner lot. So the, the corner lot here, as opposed to two fronts, it's right. a front. So there is a front street side. They, they do be, differentiate between the two. Well, um, as far as setbacks, though. They do. Do they? Yes. Um, so they identify. Um, they didn't do that when I built my addition onto my house. It was setbacks were the exact same on both sides. Well, it depends on what you're building too. So it does di differentiate between the two front yard setbacks, but it only helps in certain situations, i.e., like fences and things like that. Um, it doesn't necessarily always help, but like the principal structure, they can be the same. Um, garages, I think, is a, gives it a slight benefit. But in here, they still would be a lot. Like I said, I think the ordinance would help them be legal May through October. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, she indicated that you know they would like to leave their park or, or leave their camper parked there <coughs> year round, and obviously this ordinance wouldn't allow them. They do, they could park it year round, but it would be quite a struggle, I think, to get it back and maneuver it in between their house and their garage. It looks possible on the aerial photograph, but I doubt it's pretty you know, feasible in that situation. So in this case, it's their corner lot is both a corner lot and the way the buildings are situated, they're, they're north. West corner is where they left all the open space. Once 
two side streets. So they tuck their garage and their house closest to the street. What is the will of council on the second reading here? I would move approval of the second reading ordinance 8 19 2019 A. Second. Thank you. So no further discussion, for the vote. Yeah, roll call vote. Herman? Yes. Rodebush? Yes. Rose? Yes. West? Yes. Yes. <coughs> I have three ordinances, 3-2019A, creating a public three circle district property locally described as 855 Palisade Road or the Wellness Center. <clears throat> Second reading, Chris, anything to add? Anything new? Any comments? Any public anything? <clears throat> so, is there a motion to move forward on this? I'll move um, approval of ordinance 9-3-2019A, public overlay district for Property. property described as 855 Palisades Road, Southwest. I'll say thank you and then yeah. I'll <laughs> there. Okay. Um, if there's no further discussion, if we're ready to go to a phone call, Sue. Weasler. Yes. Rose. Yes. Rodebush. Yes. West. Yes. Thank you. Uh, G1 and 2 we basically covered already. G3 I think is where we're at. Yes, this is the actual we're in the mid to per token construction for the amount of sixty-six thousand two hundred forty-five dollars. I'll move to approve resolution. I got one. One call. Did anybody you, did you notice that the, the bids are all good except for the mobilization is forty-three thousand dollars? Is that a mistake? I have never heard of fifty percent mobilization. So is it a mistake? No. Um, I will tell you that Boomerang has bid on no less than three projects, and Boomerang's mobilization was even higher. Just, so I mean, they're out. Of, so the second out bidder of, was um, eighty-one thousand. Anamosa, I just, I just, it just, they're killing themselves with a. A mobilization fee, which doesn't make any sense at the all. The only thing that we've discussed is that I think it's to the point where if you, if they get it, great. Maybe then they'll do it. But if they don't, because it's honestly, extra profit for them if they get it. Honestly, Boomerang has been high the last three times they've been. That's just well, that makes you feel good that that's the only thing. That everything else is yes, yep, in the ballpark. So okay, that's all I. Have. Good point of comparison there. All right, I'll continue <laughs> with my motion to approve resolution 9-16-2019C to award the construction bid for infrastructure improvements on the 8th Avenue Northwest Quiet Zone project. I'll second that. Thank you, Eric. Okay. Um, this is a resolution, so I think we need to go to a work bubble again. Uh, Weasler. Yes. Rose. Yes. Rodebush. Yes. West. Yes. Herman. Yes. Thank you. G4, resolution 9-16-2019D, approving the contracts and mobilization and construction of the security package for the Lester Burge Family Community Wellness Center. This bid was actually approved about a month and a half ago. Um, finally got their contracts and bonds put in. The Tri-City Electric, 94635 the original um, estimate was 100,000. Questions for us about the project? No, it's on our table motion. I move approval of resolution 9 16 2018 D, approving the contract and bond for mobilization and construction of the security package for the Lester Burge Family Community Wellness Center to Tri City Electric. A second. Thank you. No further discussion or any vote? Sue. West. Yes. Herman. Yes. Rose. Yes. Robin Bush. Yes. Lisa. Yes. And G5, resolution 9 16 2019D, appointing paying agent, note registrar, and transfer agent, approving the paying agent and note registrar and transfer agent agreement and authorizing the execution of this agreement. Chris Ryan. These next two resolutions are essentially on the uh, refinancing of the building at the bond, so um, kind of the last two resolutions to finalize this uh, refinance. 
but they are specifically different with an E and an F there. Okay. Right. Right. Any questions about those things? Right now? Entertain a motion? On the five. I'll make a motion to approve resolution. Both of them? And I'll okay. the resolution 916, 9-16-2019. Yeah. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Deb. Any further discussion? We are ready to go to roll call vote. Rose? Yes. Wiesler? Yes. West? Yes. Herman? Yes. Spotabush? Yes. Thank you. G6, resolution 9-16-2019-F. Approving and authorizing a formal loan agreement and authorizing and providing for issuance and living a tax to pay the note. Approval of the tax exemption certificate, continuing disclosure, disclosure certificate. More to add there, or we we'll leave that up and up. I'll move approval of resolution 9 16 2019 F. I'll second. Did, did you have a question? No. Okay. Just Good enough. Okay. Um, I think we're ready to vote too on this. West. G6. Yes. Herman? Yes. Rose? Yes. Rob Bush? Yes. Wiesler? Yes. Um, I don't think I'm going to have any mayoral proclamations in the old business. Uh, <laughs> this is your shot, man. I know. You should have made one of them. Take it. Uh, mm -hmm. Moving to today, I hope the motions for approval. Consideration claims list, uh, with the one that was just sent out this afternoon. And of approval of the second list as suggested by the secondary list. A second. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Matt. This is not a roll call vote, if I remember correctly. So, if you're ready to vote on that, all in that favor, motion please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're now in the change orders and the wastewater treatment plant. <coughs> We've got Emily here from BK to speak to us. So uh, Emily is here. If you have questions on any of these change orders, again, I think we kind of pointed out that we budgeted for some unforeseen things. A lot of this stuff was, uh, I want to say underwater, but it's not exactly water. So um, we knew that when we started this project that we would run into some of this. So um, you'll have to act on each individual change order as they go. If you have individual questions on the change order as you get to it, and we just hear from the AK. On that, that that new skimmer blade, the one that's thirty-four thousand. Do you know what it's made out of now? Is it is it a stainless steel well, blade or? Sorry, I'll move up so people can hear. Um, so it's not just the blade, it's like the skimmer arm and the blades down below, and there's multiple pieces, but yeah, I mean the, the blade itself is stainless at the bottom, if that's what we're talking about, which isn't really skimmer, but um, basically all the equipment in the plant is basically designed for a 20 year design life, and what we're at is year 18, I think, something like that. So. Um, so these are typical wear items that they would expect to see that might need some work. Um, or get new. This is this is all new work. Yeah, this will be new. They'll replace it. A lot of it um, either has they inspected it. It where the bolt holes and stuff are. A lot of it is corroded to the point where they can't reattach, and um, some of it requires some welding to actually cut and re-weld some stuff on. Um, that's all included in that particular change order. I, that one is six, six maybe? Yeah. Maybe six, six, five. But um, that's probably the, the largest one. And we're guessing just to, I mean, I need to bring, I guess bring it up now, but we're guessing since this is just the North Clarifier that when we get the South one down, similar it's going to be a similar situation. Um, we won't know until we get it in. Were they put in? At roughly the same time, yeah. or was okay. All right. So everything at the plant was constructed at the same time. Okay. So right. unfortunately, that means a lot of the stuff goes back. This is one of those deals you start taking stuff. So apart. to yeah. to give everybody some perspective, when we talked about the UV disinfection portion of this project, we talked about the UV disinfection being about nine hundred thousand of the one point seven six million dollar project that we have, and we haven't give or take another one point six to one point eight to do. 
five years from now. So, um, again, we knew getting into it, and we we talked about this early on in the project that if we were going to do the UV disinfection, knowing that we wanted them to kind of go through the entire plant, um, we were going to see some of this stuff. So. Mm -hmm. And, and these chamber too, I feel pretty confident wouldn't have mattered if we had known. I mean, we could have <coughs> drained those clarifiers at a time, had somebody come out and inspect them, they would have charged us the same amount, you know. And then they would have found the same items. Mm -hmm. And these are all factory items. Um, so they're going to charge us the same no matter what. And I don't feel like the contractors, I mean, the contractors charging us what time they anticipate. We were fortunate to have a contractor that does this kind of work routinely and really does know how to do it and what's involved. So I don't feel like we've got somebody that's just guessing. Um, so I'm pretty confident this is a, a fair price for the work. It's just a matter of getting in there and getting it done. And it's still, <laughs> even though it seems expensive, it's still less expensive than getting an entirely new piece of equipment in there. Well, if you, I mean, if these are 20 year parts, you know, yeah. 34,000 over 20 years. And I know working water treatment there is not a bad deal. Yeah, and I know I've talked to when I was talking with Alice about some of this before. I mean he's had he has had things, you know, fall in on the clarifier before and have it rewelded and replaced and that kind of stuff. So it's not it's not like this has been maintenance free for the last, you know, twenty years either. But um, I think he's done a, as good as you can to try to keep those maintained and keep it operational. Unfortunately, you know, it's unfortunately that's just the way the equipment works. So, um, I don't know if anybody has, I'm assuming the clarifier was the big concern. Um, and we have no contingency for that, is that right? Or this has to be a modification to the... So we, we placed extra dollars into our SRF funding. That was kind of our contingency. So we have a base bid, and then we have ourselves a cushion in what we can borrow in SRF. Um, it's within that. It's not necessarily within it. Like contingency, it's a di different kind of contingency than we would have, say, for the wellness center. If that makes sense. And we and we will need to talk about that too because we are. I think we're approaching our yeah. We're getting close allowance. So um, knowing that there's additional costs that are probably going to be coming. Um, it, it, we may have to look through that. <laughs> um, I know as far as the SRF program goes, getting additional funding to cover it wouldn't be an issue, but it, yeah, that's we'll have a, to file some paperwork. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you do have to go through the process again. But So we probably want to hold off on that until we know for certain what the amounts would be. And so this is just for the north one, correct? Or whatever. This is just for well, one of the thirty-four thousand. For the, the clarifier. For the clarifier. Oh, okay. So change order six. Okay. So there's multiple ones. Yeah. Normally we clean these up a little bit more and put them on our own paperwork and kind of combine them. But because they're because some of them had additional mm -hmm. information, I thought you know if you were curious, you might want to see. I didn't want to do that for these. Um, just clar uh, the clarifier is change order six. Gotcha. Um, and nine. Okay, well, yeah, six that. is the stuff that you can see inside the tank right now. Nine is related to the drive unit, which was what we had shipped to their factory. And that one did exhibit more wear than they had anticipated. Um, we had money in for drive repair, um, but it wasn't enough because there was some damage that was, they would say, not expected after a 20-year um, and it's something they couldn't tell until they got it to their factory and took it all apart and found um, some of the bearings were more, more worn than they would have anticipated. Um, so those two are just the north clarifier. I'm guessing it'll be similar for the south clarifier. I mean, there's no reason not to assume we'd be in the same ballpark same assumption. Mm -hmm. at this point. Um, seven, change order seven, pertains to the screw pumps. And this is an item that at the time when we were looking at doing the project, we were trying to save some money. Um, a new screw pump was roughly in the neighborhood of $100,000. We have two of them, so it would have been double that. Um, we had someone come out who routinely 
um, cells, these pumps, and, and is familiar with them, and he inspected them along with us and thought that with them in service, obviously, um, that we could rehab those pumps and potentially save $60,000 a pump, roughly. Unfortunately, when we pulled them out and sent them to the factory, they got them all cleaned up and did the full inspection on them and said that there was just, there were some, I guess, too many spots where the tube itself on the pump um, had holes and things that they couldn't sandblast and recoat and do the work that they were going to do. So, um, in this particular, on Change Order 7, what we tried to do with, with the budget in mind, um, at this time we're going to completely repair the one pump that they have pulled and shipped to the factory, um, which involves replacing the entire tube assembly. Um, and that's what this change order is for, but then we also deleted the work on the pump that they haven't pulled yet, with the exception of getting a new motor. Um, this will be done with the second. Yeah, and we're going to try to shift this back because we're trying to keep this, you know, obviously we have a budget we're trying to meet, too. And um, having discussed that with Alex at the plant, you know, we've got one pump. The way that these all these pumps are designed, the way that we're required to design them by DNR is that one pump should be able to handle all of the flow. And you have a backup, and that's why there's two. So even if something should happen to that first, or that old pump that we haven't repaired, the first pump should be brand new, should continue to work. Um, and they, you know, at that point we could assess whether, what needs to be done on that old pump. But <coughs> otherwise we'd be looking at a significant cost. So on these pumps, let's say we get them both replaced, are they both going to be running together then? Or was one always going to be? One was always now, on standby. Now are we, are we going to switch them off? Do they switch off? So one doesn't run all the time, okay, yes. so they alternate. Yep. My understanding is they do it monthly, right. unless there's some other reason. Any, any of the amount of the equipment down there that we can alternate gets alternated mm -hmm. now. Okay. Uh, that's why we're okay with pushing the second back to phase two. <coughs> um, we feel fairly strong that we'll be able to, to kind of manage them. But yes, they're not operating 24-7. For a whole year, yeah, right. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, we do. It, they were alternating once a month, according to. Um, and you want to do that for the the bearings and everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, is this going to lead to a eventual rate increase because of all these? Well, so we have the the next five years, right? You know, schedule. And I, I told you at that mm -hmm. time that water might be okay. At the end of this five-year period, um, by that meeting, we may not have to go to three percent. We may not be even. We may be able to knock that down to one you percent know, or one and a half percent. I think you're always going to want to try and keep up with inflation, but not necessarily continue with a three percent increase. Sewer isn't going to be that lucky. I just um, I didn't feel good about it when we limited it to the five to begin with the sewer, but. We're not out anything by just doing it in five year increments, but I would venture to say sewer will have at least another five year because we'll be taking on more debt. If there's some debt coming off and taking on more debt, it's not going to be a complete wash. Um, we're still going to come out with more debt than what we're removing, so um, we might, might still might be able to reduce it from three percent, but not by much, probably. So everybody's aware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, yeah. there's, there's, without a shadow of a doubt, that it's going to cost yeah. two rates. Now, I will say that other communities are facing, you know, double-digit percentage increases. Um, so by doing the three percent annually and trying to kind of to stair step that, you know, we're lucky in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to stay ahead of it. I would, say, I would say most communities that we work with are now going to more of a, you know, five-year plan kind of stair step, and he's right, most of them are doing substantially more, um, have substantially more costs at their wastewater plants for and, improvement. And what's going to be our capacity? I mean, with the new subdivisions, let's say the subdivisions are completely filled up, what is the capacity? We don't necessarily have a capacity issue now. We're really almost operating at about half capacity. Normally, where we run into trouble 
um, is with inflow and infiltration. So I and I, when we talk about that term, so it's the amount of water coming in during storm events to our sewer system that doesn't necessarily need to be treated that causes us to um, bump up against certain percentages. So we will have to do something with that. And the question will be, is it cheaper to try and start an INI &I program? Or you know, it could be something as simple as, and it's not simple, but we could put a, a storage tank where all of that water I &I goes, and I and then we pump it over. Uh, so I will say that BNK is, is aware of what's going on, and we're looking at various options. We have talked about a satellite facility that we would pump to this. You know, this would be our main treatment, and then having kind of a, a holding area, but that gets into whole other set of regulations, and, and so um, it is on our radar. It is a point of conversation, but as of right now. Um, the biggest issue has more to do with that infiltration than it does uh, with the additional house. And, and we have that additional um, discharge limit put on our plant. You know, regulations have been evolving on that as well. So now we're, I mean, just why we're doing UV to begin with, right. and then also um, the plant project, and the, the next plant project will be to handle both nitrogen or nutrients. Um, and those are. Those are just additional regulations that weren't there at the time that the plant was constructed. But you, he is correct. The, the plant itself, um, generally on a, on a monthly flow basis, is under capacity, substantially under capacity. So it's not that. It's just the peak events when we have those big rainfall events. Yeah, I know there's people that got their sound uh, put into them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen them put it into there directly into our sewer. Yeah, we'll have options. I can tell you, none of them will be cheap. You're not as politically popular. No. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So we don't, need to do these. Don't leave yet, Emily. Let's get back on task. <laughs> day, day two, which yeah. is we change order number five. So, we need some questions for sure. So we need to go one by one, right? Yes. Five through twelve. Correct. Okay. And five is the tea dust. Yes, yeah, so I'm happy, yeah, yeah. I'm happy to case. move to oh, oh, a small one. Order here. number five. I'll enthusiastically second. <laughs> move to second it, um, to accept change order number five. Um, you don't need a roll call for this. Yeah, I know. If there's no other discussion or questions about it, let's go to a vote. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to change order number six. Then move approval of change order number six in the amount of thirty-four thousand four hundred fifty-four dollars seventy-four cents. I, I, sorry, I need to interrupt here. I just want to mention one other thing. On these change orders that we have in front of us, there are work days associated associated with some of them. Um, I don't know if everybody caught that. They're asking for additional work days. Um, some of these items could be done concurrently, so there's not necessarily a need to. I guess. You know, 40 days on this. Oh, it's not like you go through each work day, add them all up, and that's yeah. your total. It's like some it's of them. It's not cumulative. Yeah, it would be, okay. I think some of these are concurrent. Okay. At this point, we definitely are only going to get through one clarifier this fall. We had hoped to get both of them done. So it's definitely, even though the uh, completion date isn't until June of next next year, um, we're definitely going to be pushing that second clarifier. Into that. So and I didn't put the, um, or point out the work days because as long as the time crunch for us was the UV disinfection portion of the project. And then um, that was kind of priority number one, and that's part of our permit as far as what we submitted to the DNR, what we were going to do. Um, so the rest of the work days, you know, it didn't bother me as much as I went through each of these change orders. Yeah. And the contractor's just asking because they're always worried about those, yeah, sure. the potential for damages. Um, but I don't think in this case we're that concerned. They certainly are interested in getting off the site as quickly as they It doesn't can. affect our operation. The additional days will not affect our operation. So I just want to be sure everyone was aware of that when we're approving these. I would I would advise that these are approved but not cumulatively, like mm -hmm. that they are concurrent. So we'd be looking at adding at the most um, on chain order seven is fifty days. I would I feel like that's a a fair addition. Yeah, we'll put our date until like July. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
I've got a motion on the floor mm -hmm. for uh, change order number six. That we first, the next step is to get a second on that motion. Is no a second. second. Yeah, thank you. There can't be any further discussion since we've already discussed it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be ready to vote on change order number six. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number seven. Let's group on the scope change. I'll move to approve this group on scope change at an addition of $325.98. Give a second. All second. Any further questions or discussion? So now that we're ready to vote for approval of change order number seven, please acknowledge by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah, I only need it. I only did it for the three hundred twenty-five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll make sure that the minutes reflect. Uh, 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 smallest change order. So noted. <laughs> and the We're going to change order number eight. The North and South screw up order. I'm going to change order number eight in the amount of two thousand one hundred twenty-one dollars and seventy-one cents. Is there a second? Yes, I will second. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion? I don't want anybody. Are you ready to vote on um, change order number eight? All in favor of motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Your clarifier, number nine. So this one, just to clarify on this one, because the last sentence says, if not needed, the base housing will be credited back. So this would be a maximum of the 16,700 and change. But it might be less than that if yeah. that part is reusable. Or whatever. Hey, that's <laughs> <good>. <laughs> I'm going glass half full, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and they gave us the price for the base housing in the back. So. Yeah. All right, well, with that being said, I will move approval of change order number nine in the amount of $16,783.08. I'll second. Thank you. Um, any further questions and discussion about the bill tonight? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Moving on to change order number 10. I'll make the motion to approve change order 10 in the amount of $1,817.75. I'll second. Thank you, Scott. Any clarification needed? Any questions? Otherwise, we're ready to vote on number 10. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 8, change order on number 11. I'm going to use water treatment for this. I can see number 2, relocate conduits. Any more to explain? We didn't know where they were. That's what I was thinking. Okay. We don't, so we, I don't think the city either, we were never, nobody has plans for this. All right. <laughs> oh. um, and, and where the electrical is, it actually goes under a building, and we wouldn't have anticipated it going there. Okay. So, and we it was. six months looking for a pipe. Huh? <laughs> it, it was, I don't know, 15 feet down or something. I mean, I've never seen electrical that <coughs> deep. It actually goes under the, a wet well and. I assume when we redo these, we're going to put plans in place so we know. Yes, we're shooting all of it. We're, okay. Yeah. And this, we're what we're doing here, is going to help us for when we get to this phase two. I mean, it's no. Temporary. This this particular item has to be moved in order to install the UV disinfection. Okay. It actually cuts through where our UV disinfection goes, so we have to move it out of the way. The west side of our property is a bit of a maze. But what I'm saying is, when we so when we get to the other. Oh, it won't affect, it, it, it doesn't affect the future one, but okay. But we have to do it for this one, this particular change order, the conduit. We won't, most likely won't be in that area in the next phase, but we can't. The next phase it. is a nutrient reduction strategy, which is likely the addition of another clarifier and other <coughs> We work in the aeration basis. In that case, now that we've found them, I will uh, move approval of change order number 11 in the amount of $5,820.33. I'll second. So move and seconded to approve change order number 11. I just need to locate conduits. 
All favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and mercifully. Speaker number 12. <laughs> Second to approve change order number 12. Or please watch it. All in favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. I think we're out of the wastewater treatment plant and off to the Lost and Burrish Family and Wellness Center now. So thank you, Emily. Did you notice I, that Eric gradually yes. off the rails? Yeah. 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 Can you jump I just had to get it going. Uh, just <laughs> Item number 10, discussion and consideration of amendment number 4 to OPM contract for the Wellness Center. Chris? Um, it's probably my least favorite one on here, but um, it, the issue really is, is the work throughout the project hasn't diminished to the contract period. So the fact that the contractors have extended their time frame almost through December. Now OPM has to make investments and they're spending more time on this project than what was previously expected. So our end date initially would have been September 29th. That's when OPM's contract would have slightly gone into October a little bit and completed. Um, now that the project, um, we we're talking about an additional 36 days at a minimum and probably getting the building the first week of December. Uh, there's still a number of items to inspect. Punch list to go through and uh, time spent on this project. So uh, we could probably attempt to go back to Garland. That's what I would recuperate some of these costs. The problem is, is they're not going to necessarily give us that cost. So, yeah, because of the two and a half months, how much is associated with weather and us adding stuff to the to the? So those are the only things they can really fall back. The only extensions that we're going to, uh, the only extensions that they've got the Garling has asked for have been weather. Weather it hasn't been because we added climbing wall extensions, all this stuff. Well, then uh, I just. I don't know, it just seems that when you add an extra month and a half on, by golly, they should be the ones paying the extra. We should pay a, a month and they should pay a month and a half. I mean, I just, I just have a problem with that. I, I'm an engineer and I'm a, I've am been in construction for 40 years and I have a contractor's license in Indianapolis, Indiana. So I've seen this and I just, I just don't like getting taken and that's getting taken there. Because they could justify a month. And if they would have, and if they had any brains, they would have said, okay, the climbing wall is going to add two days or four days. Well, to that and this and that. And then I could understand it, but they didn't. So, so you haven't seen the additional change order. So they've, they've justified both weather related extensions. Sure. Um, the first you gave them was 28 days, and that was for the winter weather. And then this next one right now is sitting at 36 days for the spring. That that's the contractor. Like I said, this is all kind of a a, a roundabout manner. Um, but they didn't dig. Then they had that long period of no rain, and of course they don't deduct saying, "Hey, we had great weather for all this time, so now we're no longer correct." Yeah, see, so yeah, they can have the worst, and they can get it. But when it when it goes all well for them. Then it's great for them because they, it doesn't hurt them at all. So. Do we have um, any sense that they chose to work on the school project versus our project? Um, from Garling, no. From their subs, mm -hmm. yes. I, I think has that from a from a trade from a trade perspective, and this is something that's verifiable. Um, all of the projects across the state of Iowa, there's a vast majority of them that are behind. So even if you go to like the Carpenter's Trade right now, 
uh, they don't have anybody to give. And so what we're being told is the schools did take priority. Um, and it's mostly subs, so it's not, the, it, you know, in this case, Garland has very little work on our project outside of being the GC. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the subs that have the additional work. So I will tell you that Garland has supplemented um, contractors, meaning they've brought in other contractors and they will reduce their amount that they pay for their subs accordingly for the roofing and electric. Um, but for instance, like the, the curtain wall, uh, all the glass, the glazing that's going on, you know, that framing is sitting with yeah. the subcontractor. So they can't bring in an additional sub to supplement them because they don't have the materials. Uh -huh. And so there's little games that I think are being played by everyone. But I would tell you that I have, without a shadow of a doubt, belief that the schools Took not just our schools, all schools, took precedence mm -hmm. over our project. Um, we had a, a fairly candid conversation at our last meeting, um, you know, informed them that we expect to be in that building operational by January 2nd. Uh, I have received zero indication that that won't happen. Um, the building itself is buttoned up. They are uh, starting to, I would say they're starting to human dehumidify, but if they are, then they left two southern openings uh, yeah. where the curtain wall is yeah. um, Wire is being pulled, paint is, is being applied in, in the roof areas. I mean, there are things that they're doing to try and catch up, um, but yeah, that is a challenge. And it, it, it's something that they're kind of openly admitting when they get there is that the subcontractors are yeah, so I mean, the reason for me bringing that up is that's causing the time delay as well. So it's not just the weather. I mean, now we're into that period of time where they could be making up time, if you will. I mean, the weather's nice, things are dry, but now we have another reason why we continue to delay and probably push back further. So I'm kind of of the same mindset as Eric, you know, there's got to be a happy medium when it comes to the architect. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we will continue to need their services because we have to keep on top of these guys, but, but, the, but it they, is a one-way street, I don't think. And when they originally mm -hmm. estimated the project, I would assume that they have these checkpoints <coughs> that they have to oversee the work that's being done, right? And as things are completed, Am I understanding correctly what their what their role is now? That to a certain extent, yes. Okay. So, um, so whether they're in charge of. So if you go to submittal submittal exchange and look at what the progress or what the proper um, reports are, so everything gets submitted. So they they do this massive set of plans, mm -hmm. and then each of the subcontractors does another set of plans called shop plans. Mm -hmm. uh, so they review all of those shop drawings, and then all of the warranty information that comes in based upon those shop drawings, any changes to those shop drawings that come up throughout the process. So they are affected, you know, and I'm here to tell you that I don't like this one, but at the same time, I can't find a reason necessarily to unjustify in, in the additional amount. But to, to answer your question, <clears throat> yes, but all of this gets elongated as as we go through the process. So, so are they having to look at things more? I mean, you know what I'm saying? They're, if, if something is extended by two weeks and it's done and they have to review the, where it's at, they're still reviewing it one time. Right. Whether it took two it weeks or whether it took two days. Yeah, I, I, again, and I don't. I'm trying, just, you know, they're not the ones that are doing the rest of the work. They're reviewing it. Huh. So I'm just, I'm just struggling with what takes them more time than what they estimated at the beginning of the project. I understand. Um, okay. And, and again, I can go back and you can table this item and we can ask for additional clarification if you would like and we can have them come to the meeting. I have no issue with that whatsoever. Okay. Um, my belief is that 
the additional time is all of the work that's kind of done in between. So none of the work stopped while all of this was going on. So they were out there, yes. Um, OPN, you know, is essentially going to spend another two and a half months out there because Darling is going to spend another two and a half months out there. But on that note, let's say during that cold spirit period when nothing was getting done, surely we weren't being billed by OPN for ten days of nothing getting done. That's what I think that's kind of what she's on. Yeah, but so if it's delayed ten days, there's ten days that should shift on to something else. But, but they don't. So I don't understand that. Days. So during that period of days when there wasn't going anything, they were doing the shop drawing review. So OPN's never really stopped doing what they're supposed to be doing throughout this process. They're being affected by the general contract. So right. even though let's just say Garling shut down for two weeks, which they did, they were still submitting documents for review. And when you look at the document sheet, um, and I would encourage you to come in and look at the submittal exchange. There's, not to exaggerate, a couple hundred I've seen it. I've documents. Seen it. I mean, so all of that was going on during this process. OPN didn't stop working just because Garling didn't have anybody on site. So they have specific points that they come out and inspect, but all of the documentation that was being submitted was being reviewed by OPN as well. Also, working on some of the sub packages as we went through this process. Now, I, I like I said, I think you make some points. I think they're going to make some counterpoints, and, and if you want to have them do that before you vote on it, I'm comfortable having you table this and, and requesting that they come to a meeting. I'm not firmly convinced that OPN is the root cause well, of this. I know that. And yeah, yeah I, I but I I feel like. We ought to be able to have that as a conversation instead of just be blindly presented with um, an invoice for extension. Yeah, it's, it's I, I think part of it is you know when we when we approve an additional four feet on the wall, it's something very tangible. You know, there's labor and and uh, materials with that. This one is just less tangible to me to understand what's there. So I feel like. Some additional explanation would be helpful. No, and like I said, you know, uh, they're not going to submit a, a, an invoice for twenty-five thousand dollars tomorrow. So um, I have no issue. Like I said, if you want, to, if you wish to table this, I will invite OPN and allow Justin to come in and, and justify his amount. I, you know, all I can tell you is these are my assumptions based upon what's going yeah. on the project. OPN, ha I will tell you, has never stopped working on the project. There's always been something going on. Um, and the fact that we're going to be two a month, two and a half months behind schedule, you know, we still have um, punch lists, things like that. That yes, they would have had, but they should have been doing them by the end of this month. I'd, yeah. I'd be in favor of tabling this for now and asking them to to help us understand. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the only problem I have, like again, you said. During that time, yeah, they were working, but maybe they were only using one guy instead of two. Because if there was no delays, let's, let's say they had perfect weather throughout. Now you're trying to tell me that then they wouldn't have had enough time to get it done because they had two weeks here of off time to catch up. And if everything would have gone smoothly, then they would have had to put three or four people on it to keep up or something. Something's not jiving here. It just, well, I, and it just I want to make sure that like everybody people. understands OPN does not have anybody on site. Right. And never have. So through OPN, we have a landscape architect, an interior designer, a principal architect, that would be Justin, and then kind of a site architect, that's Matthew Stewart. Uh, so all four of those individuals, and we do have one additional um, individual that works with Matthew. So we have five people kind of at our disposal throughout the project. They all work at different times. During that first initial winter period, I guarantee all five of them are working on it because I worked with at least three of them. On a daily basis, the interior designer working on furnishings, landscape architect on finalizing what the exterior design was, and then Matthew and uh, Brady, Brady um, would have been going through all of the snows. So the one that I would say, as far as seeing less and less on as the project goes on, is the principal, and that would be Justin. May, may I ask, when we do receive um, 
buildings from OPM, are they by personnel? Is it is it like Can you a, that? Is it is it that level is of it detail itemized? or is it just a um, a flat fee per or no, it's bro it's broken out slightly, but not to I mean they don't have specific names, but yes. I mean, it's by function Kind of. And for each one of these change orders, OPM billed us for the, the extra work they had to do for the change orders, too, correct? No, that was GARA. Not so OPM. OPM doesn't have to look at any of the change orders? They do. That's part of their original contract. So yeah. they had in their contract that if so many change orders were. Yeah, it was take a specific question I asked when we started it. Okay. You know, on average, when they get done with their plans, how many change orders do they, I mean, what is the percentage of change orders that they're basically building into their contract? So OPM knows they're going to get change order requests. Oh. There's a certain number of change order requests, ITCs, requests for additional information. Um, all of that is within their fee, so they, that's why they have kind of a, a, I think their fee overall is 6% of the construction cost. Because sometimes engineering firms build in a fee for each change. No, so they they, they build a percentage okay. of the overall cost, and all of that was built into it. Yeah. So no, we don't receive an itemized list like that, that they were looking at specific. We could, uh, we probably request of them kind of an itemized number of hours that they've worked on it, but knowing this job, it'll be substantial. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, my my thought is I really don't feel like we are at the root cause. I don't think OPM is the root cause of this. Mm -hmm. I need to understand that. Mm -hmm. Right, I would yeah. just like to understand their No, and that's what like I said. Yeah. Um, I had, there's no time crunch needed in this. So. Okay. And uh, I would just want to clarify one other thing, just in your, your note here. You're requesting 2500 a week. An additional twenty five thousand. So it's not twenty five hundred plus twenty five thousand. No, no, no. I'm estimating it as about ten weeks. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah I would. Um, obviously, there's a lot of questions that need answers, and I would also be in favor of tabling it to the next meeting and inviting OPN to come have a just explain and clarify. Mm -hmm. so motion for that. Yes, motion to ten. I'll make a motion. So moved. To table. table amendment number four, four to the OPM contract. I'll second. <clears throat> Got a motion on the floor to um, table with amendment number four. No further questions or discussion. Ready to vote on it. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Eric, I shut you off. Okay, please say aye. Oh, number 11, <laughs> discussion and consideration change order number 23. Uh, both of these change orders have been discussed and approved. Previously, but these are the form like paperwork. Um, so the first change order, change order 23, was for portions of the uh, fill that failed underneath what would be the basketball courts. Um, they did have that covered. They did attempt to preserve that area. Um, it was just cold, so even under the blankets. But 16,334. Um, the other change order was um, approved by staff for 523. Um, had to do with color of the partitions in the block rooms. So I did also provide you with the latest update of where we're at in relation to change orders. Um, so uh, 26 total, you either rejected or denied five, and um, we still have 263,000. Pretty happy where we're at right now. My colors <laughs> suck. <laughs> well, and I noticed that after the fact that they sent me the black and white color. That purple doesn't look like purple it's to me. That <laughs> it's a solid color match right there. Yeah. <laughs> what is the will of the group here on change order number 23, first of all? I move approval of change order number 23. Second <coughs> amount of $16,334. Second. Any further clarification or questions on 23? Just ready to vote on uh, <coughs> we'll change order number 23. All in favor of motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 25. 
Any more discussion on that? I'll make Call a motion to approve change order number 25 in the amount of $523. Thank you. Second. I'll second. All right. Any other questions or discussion about the color of petitions? We'll vote on motion to approve change order number 25. All in favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. To item 13, exterior signage quote from the Lusty Bridge Family Community Wellness Center. So there'll be two exterior signs. They're basically lettering on both sides of the building. Um, one on the north side by the entrance door. Um, it'll be, if you're facing the building, it will be just to your left and uh, on the brick itself. And then on the north, it will be in the northeast, or on the south, it'll be on the southeast corner facing Palisades. And that will be slightly larger. <coughs> so you can see it coming up from there. Um, again, this was in the package, but not part of Garling's construction training. Staff is recommending the full sign for the amount of thirteen thousand four dollars and seventy eight cents. Are they lead? Are they? Are they lead? No. no, but there will be. Um, yeah, there will be. Yeah, there will be. It will be uplit. Oh, so On the north side, there's actual lighting that will line the sidewalk as well, so there'll be plenty of light coming into the building. Do you remember what you originally plugged in for that? Just curious. Um, I think 10,000 was originally planned. Um, I will say that that really wasn't it. The Lester Burge Family Community Center was slightly <laughs> larger than what I think they had expected. Yeah. So. On a third letter basis, this yeah. 13 grand is actually a deal. So. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't John Doe Center or anything like that. It's going to be a little hype as we continue it on the section. <laughs> it does actually look because of the little hall size. It looks pretty cool, but yeah, yeah I'm building it any smaller. That would have been an interesting. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll move to approve the uh, exterior signage quote for $13,004.78. I'll second. Okay, we've got a motion on the floor to approve the exterior signage quote. For no further questions, I'll carry the motion. Please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Pay application. Fifth Avenue at First Street traffic signal. So, this is the last regular pay application, the amount of $20,862.71. After this, they will wait 30 days and then request um, the retainage. And I, since I've been on and operating, I haven't received any complaints after the initial four days. Yeah, I, um, I, do, I do believe the students, and I know because <coughs> I drive that every morning, I feel so much better with the kids going to that intersection. Mm -hmm. And I come up fifth, headed south. So you're the one Physically. shutting everybody down. Is that what you're telling me? That's exactly. Well, <laughs> and that's been the story of my life. That, that has nothing to do with this. <laughs> this is just a physical just sensation. A okay. I think it, it, it fits the bill with, I think Marty, Marty was in here. The, the gal who has the knitting store, and she was worried about the sight lines coming up mm -hmm. fifth mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. quite a while ago, and yes. I think this helps solve that issue mm -hmm. too. So, yep. 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 but yeah, it's when you pull up, you can, you know, almost. Be My top husband 30. commented about how yeah. well the cameras seem to be working because you're up there and you're not there very long. Yeah, you know, it, it's. Yeah. I, I would 100% agree. I would say traffic flow through there is actually better than it was. Yeah, totally yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. It's very great. Yeah. So, with all of that wonderful really? thing said, um, approval of pay application over time in the amount of $20,862.71. Yeah, I'll second. We have a motion to approve pay application number five on the Fifth Avenue First Street traffic signal project. All in motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. What will be maintenance operator three job description? So um, Nick and I have been conversing about this, and now that we have the wellness center 
Matt joined the discussion, and now that we have a police station, Doug has joined the conversation. So we've, <laughs> we've tried to decide what is going to be the most efficient way to make sure that snow is removed at all of these locations, that we are maintaining and keeping track of building maintenance needs at all of these locations. And um, we had originally talked about the, the fact that we were going to need an, an additional public works employee um, probably in the years 2022, 2023. Not that we can't or don't need them now, but that's when we expected some of the new revenue tax money to start coming through the door. Um, we had originally talked about uh, setting aside or using a permanent part-time employee at the wellness center to kind of what I would consider be janitorial staff, building maintenance um, at that location. Uh, the issue that we were having there, though, is how do you have a permanent part-time employee on call during the winter months when things need to be snow, you know, snow removal, parking lot needs to be um, cleared at 10 o'clock when we no longer have staff in the building. Uh, all of us getting together, we've basically come up with taking the wellness center funds and that will cover the gap that we need um, to basically get our additional person. Um, making it a full-time position. The, the buildings themselves will actually become a snow route. Uh, so this one individual will be in charge of all of these buildings, making sure that they stay open. Uh, and then we would hire somebody. We expect somebody internally to take this position and then we would hire to fill that. So we would, we would be one more person, although I don't feel like we would <coughs> Actually, be of a person, maybe like a half a person. It's filling like needs that are still coming up. Yeah, it's really what it's doing. It's hard to say we're up a yeah. person when we take on <coughs> you know, all of the additional items that we have as of late. So, um, now you say approximately twenty-five thousand of community wellness center funds will be utilized for this position. Do you mean initially? No. On a consistent. So, to give you a rough idea, you know, most of the staff is paid. <coughs> portion share out of a number of funds. Mm -hmm. um, this individual will be a percent, it'll just roughly be somewhere in the neighborhood of 25,000 that it'll equate out to. Okay. Annually? Annually, yeah. Which is where I expected a permanent part-time right. individual uh, without benefits to be. Mm -hmm. Did you discuss with the school at all about maintenance possibilities since they are clearing their area that be wise that they could clear the parking lot and the burger center and that kind of thing. Well, I would have, but it would have just been the burger center at first, and then Doug finds the church. And <laughs> you have a snowblower. Yeah, you have a monster. <laughs> and so, you got monster. I mean, there's a lot of energy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, originally we explored kind of a lot of options, and then, you know, we've gotten to, like I said, we've gotten to a point now where um, <laughs> the goal being that this individual. So Matt and Sarah will no longer have um, summer help under them. You know, I explained to Tom earlier when we were going to talk. There's this extremely long saga on how Matt ended up with summer help to begin with, and now you know most of the work happens through public works anyway. We're just kind of going back to what it, it has been. But yes, I think until you added city hall, the police station when we have concrete at the public work site. I mean, all of those locations now are going to need attention. And, and so, um, yes. the other thing that I like about this is when this person does get their route down, they can out, hop on the street. So we actually have one more kind of in our fleet to help because we are going to get pulled Highway 30 as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have to account for that as well. And that piece of equipment that we don't have yet is going to need to be purchased because we'll need a bigger unit you're going to have to make sure you get one that can clear that, that quiet zone properly, too. Because if you get if you get ramp-ups of the snow that they can easily pop over, you're going to have to clean those edges real nice. Yeah, so... That's coming. <laughs> Nick's already started on this one, if you have yeah, this, but the Kubota room. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're going to see a series of equipment changes in the CIP simply because we're making adjustments to what has transpired over the last six months. 
this was a discussion and consideration item, but do you want it as an action item as well? Yes, uh, I would approve, the, if you approve the job description, then we can move forward with internally um, advertising this, see if, if we, if an individual employee that we think is willing to do it, if he does, then we can advertise for his release. And it's just a part-time? Like, this one would be full. We would have gone to a part-time, but I'm going to take what I would have spent for a part-time employee out of the wellness center, so their budget will be... They're subsidizing about half the cost. Basically, through a series of budgets, you had a couple of part-times. Right. Yeah. Flipping them together. Yeah. In that case, I would move approval of the building and maintenance job description um, as presented. Me too. I second that. Okay. Motion on the table to approve the building and... Building and maintenance operator three, job description, all for the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Carries. Item 16 is setting a public hearing date. The next two are just public hearing dates now and any additional. Oh, yeah. Okay. But they need to be handled in separate motions, I assume? Uh, so, yes. Okay. So now on day 16 then. I move approval of the separate public hearing date for Monday, October 7. I'll second. second. We can second to set a public hearing date for a budget amendment on Monday, October 7th. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next public hearing date. Final flat of Warra Pleasant View Edition. And move we'll approval of setting a public hearing date for the Warra Pleasant View Edition for our next delivery scheduled meeting, Monday, October 7th. Second. Any further discussion? Questions? Otherwise, all in favor of the motion, please acknowledge by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Which carries. I will purchase. Um, we talked about this before. It's part of the $100,000 or so of additional purchases that we had earmarked out of the facility. Um, I had Matt send you the link so that you didn't have to pull them up. I know we were going to be here long enough as it was. So if you have any specific questions, Matt is here. Um, but I call it the giant week. I think it looks at like recreation and wellness in a full spectrum. I mean, you've got it there. Yeah, this is uh, this is all ages too, which is I don't know if you saw the video, but that uh, yoga one could be done by seniors. It could be slowed down. It could be calculated that way. There's nine games currently available, and then if we go the three-year purchase route, there's one lump sum, but it's a three-year warranty. Um, that's the best. That's the one that we that I recommend. So Is that it comes with additional games? It comes with additional games year. over a three year period. Games were originally, the way they originally were to have you purchase them was $1,000 for a new game. Then they changed their pricing, and the way that they are now pricing games is you actually pay $200 a month. So we would be paying $200 a month for three years. It doesn't make any sense for us to do it that route. So let's just get all fun with all in one. So we can keep it new and fresh for three years for sure. And I don't know what the, I, I don't, I have no indication what they'll do after three years, but that's something we can have a conversation on. And it says nine games currently available, so we'll start off the bat with nine. Correct. We'll get all the games they have available, and then two to four is their average uh, in the, in the number they gave me for new games per year. So instead of paying $3,600 for maybe only six new games, we just pay straight up $3,000. And a three-year warranty. It adds two more years to the warranty. So in that mind, in my mind, that's worth it. So, so. this is this is software, right? Pardon me. This is software and equipment and, and equipment. the and equipment and the, on the screens and it's everything that you see on the on the pictures. Yeah. How big are the screens? Sixty-five inch, two sixty-five inch screens. So what happens if we get this software in house and it's running merrily along and there's some sort of vulnerability that's in the software that opens up our security package to somebody breaching us? What do we do? So it's tied into our network. Just saying. No, Just it is tied email. into our network, and so it's under the same firewall that um, the rest of our program is. So we have we have talked about the fact that I mean, right now, same as City Hall, we have offsite storage that's backed up daily. So you know. We carry insurance. I mean, we we will do everything that we can do to kind of prevent that situation from occurring. But um, ultimately, the, the best thing that we can do is we back up every day. Yeah. So that's that's one of the reasons why they're moving to the 
monthly pay for service thing so that they can keep their software clean and protect us all. And if we buy everything, we're not on their update structure. We need to have a clear, I feel like you need to have a clarification as far as what will happen to update that software that's in house. Because it doesn't the warranty. Well, well so we I can, just want to be sure. Yeah, yeah. We'll, I mean, we'll continue to purchase. So here's what the reason that I've asked Matt to do it this way is three years is a solid number for this type of equipment. It's not necessarily connected to the building. It does sit in one of the rooms. However, um, technology changes at such a fast clip. So we will have a decision to make in year three. Do we continue to pay the $200 fee? Because we will have to either decide to maintain these updates or get rid of this piece of equipment because we won't have an outdated item hooked to our, well, our server. Well, you how often it's being used. Yeah, that's the thing. We'll be able to gauge the use, but you know, after three years, we'll have to make a decision. Yeah. But, but my, my concern is not that. Yeah. My concern is you bring it in-house and we've purchased it. Yeah. Will they provide to us the updated software to secure our... For the three-year period, yes. For the three-year period, yes. yes. Okay. For the three-year period, it's in their contract. Okay. All right. After That's that, we will have yeah. we will have a choice to make. Yes. Yeah, so, so after three years, if we don't do anything, if we don't purchase it, an additional one, <coughs> if we don't purchase two hundred dollars for additional games, we're probably stuck. If there is some type of an issue like that. I just I just want us to yeah. be very careful because the, the risk is very real. Sure. Yeah, we've, we've done that actually once already with uh, GIS. <coughs> so that brings up a question: We're going to have open Wi-Fi there. I mean, we'll have not network. connected to so the same as the city, city hall. We have a public Wi-Fi, yep. yeah, and then we have a secure Wi-Fi. Okay. There will be a public Wi-Fi, but there will also okay. be a secure Wi-Fi where information will be. Good. Yeah. Okay. We just haven't really talked about okay. I mean, undoubtedly, it's really cool. I just, yeah. Well, I think, you know, I think especially for the kids, it'll be a really big draw. Well, and it's part of your membership, so when it's yeah. available, we'll utilize it for people to come in. We'll have, especially after school, I think it'll be a really great Is there going to be some sort of sign up for it? I mean, how are you going to Yeah, so again? just like you know, anything else we'll have in the building, that will be very popular. We'll have a sign up, you know, time period, maximum yeah. time period to get, and just take turns. Yeah. Um, we anticipate in the beginning of the building being open, but we have to do that with everything. Yeah. Treadmills to, to bank cages to finals. We're just being prepared for that, and then as things tone down, we find out who uses what, and a lot more as well. Yeah. As things tone down, and we'll, and we'll continue to use that process, but I think it'll get less and less um, aggressive. As the newness ramps up. Yeah, but you know, we'll still keep yeah keep doing it. I, I, I don't think it'll get too old stale, um, but well, especially with the new games, as, you know, right. as new games come out. Okay. Thank you. There was a roll of board, uh, council, uh, this, I won't reach it. Mm -hmm. I suggest to make a motion that we move forward with the eyeball purchase. There's a second? A second. Move and second to move ahead with the eyeball purchase for the wellness center. If there are no other further questions or discussion, let's move on to uh, voting. And all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 19, discussion consideration of Palisades Road Corrective Seal Coat Overlay. So you have two portions to this bid that will be just over $13,000. The portion that's $5,990.40 will be billed Dr. Garley. I'm not sure who will end up <coughs> build their subcontractors for the damage that they've done to Palisades during the construction process. Um, the remaining $7,000 uh, is portions of the city where the seal coat um, is failing. I was asked this question earlier, is this a kind of fix? Absolutely not. This is a man. We know that Palisades um, going west, well actually Palisades in general all the way from Highway 1 to our western border mm -hmm. has to be addressed. There are just going to be two different projects. There's a portion of that can be done with an asphalt overlay and the other portion needs to be completely re reconstructed. This is that for so. Chris, this is actually a two-inch asphalt overlay. Right. Not to, it says seal coat. It's no. Like, it, this, I was just referencing is, um, whether or not it's a permanent fix. Just a minor correction on the, on the seal. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's yes. not seal coated, it's a two inch asphalt overlay. Oh, okay. okay. From 10th Avenue to basically the community center entrance on to Palisades Road. What damage is done? I guess I haven't seen it. What's the damage? Um, they brought one of their heavier pieces of equipment out onto Palisades um, Numerous with times. their metal tracks. Mm. So you can actually like see the track bar where they dropped on yeah. it or something. Yeah. Without tires or any protection whatsoever to our. Um, they gouged it a couple times. <laughs> you know, in seal field, once it goes, it, once it starts to go, it's, mm -hmm. it's almost an impossible yeah. process to stop. So, I don't This will get us by for a little while. <coughs> We're obviously waiting to see what mm -hmm. Highway 30 does as mm -hmm. far as traffic goes before we. We, we do currently have a traffic count going on between uh, 10th Avenue and uh, 15th Avenue. Maybe a technical issue. Huh? Maybe a technical issue with that. Oh, okay. Um, we're still um, counting traffic. Trying to work that <laughs> out. <laughs> we're trying to get some kind of We're using Roman numerals, <laughs> so uh, stay tuned. <laughs> I had a comments from the neighbors about uh, the contractor messing with the, the street with uh, the code on it that's not supposed to be on, as well as kind of circling through some of the circle drives across the street. And then, of course, you know, there's still some, I think, some, I still think there's some low spots in the, uh, along the street uh, and other people's yards, I guess, if they're, if they're maintaining it, that probably need to look at. But this is a short term X. Any motion on that? Yes. Okay. I move approval of the uh, Palisades Road overlay um, in the work uh, total of just over $15,000. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seconded to move it forward on the Palisades yeah. corrective uh, seal coat, or I'm sorry, okay. asphalt overlay. All favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Sewer so repair work west of 401B Avenue in the Council actually did. So this sewer line um, has been damaged by some sort of utility work. When we put the camera down and we can't tell exactly what it is, it looks like conduit of some sort. It could be um, the geothermal system of the neighbor, um, or it could be cable or some sort of telecom type conduit. It's gone, as I explained, here's the, the round sewer, it's gone right across the top, so um, the sewer itself is actually flowing today, but having the opening at the top and the pressure on the sides will likely cause that sewer line to collapse faster than what it, it even if they would have gone through the center of it, um, it would have probably been slightly better, but uh, we, this is the project that I alluded to that we're struggling to find any contractor to come and, and do the project. We're going to help with uh, uh, providing some pipe and doing some of the repair while they're here. It's the only way we can get them to come and do it. But we don't want to dig the hole or do any of the exploratory <coughs> process because if it is a geothermal well field, it's not uh, locatable. So let them dig. We'll help them with the repairs and then we'll figure out what we're dealing with when we get down there. So. Is it under the bike path or private property? Next to the bike path. Or it's next to the bike path. Mm -hmm. to the bike path. Mm -hmm. It wasn't done by the recent, not they did the, you know, like the gas got, the gas company was putting in all those new lines. Uh, not at all. The, it was actually discovered the gas company goes in with a camera and televises everything prior to their work and then after their work, and as a good faith, they turn over all that video to the city, which is actually great information for us to have that we can um, hopefully upload them. So system. they found it in there. They did uh -huh. find it prior to inform us, and then once we're informed, we probably need to fix. So yeah. we really and it's hard to go back when by. if this happened. No. Now, when you get down there and you find out who does it, is there any any recourse? Yeah, possibly. If the contractor is still in business, that we can locate the contractor. I mean, yeah, we won't know for sure.
sure until we get it dug out. It'll be interesting. It's not a big section, which is good, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll try if we can. This is action item. Mm -hmm. Careful where you dig. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I would move approval of the sewer repair work uh, in the uh, total of thirty-nine, excuse me, three thousand nine hundred eight dollars. Second. Move to second to move forward on the sewer repair work west of four hundred one D Avenue Northeast. For no further questions, Nick. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Discussion and consideration of LA Park extension seating. Got to get up there lately. It's been a lot different than one week. And I didn't receive the seating bids. I know Hall and Hall was going to try and get us to this. This might have to be held to the next meeting. Oh, they were going to give us a number not to exceed. And I didn't see it today. Did you? I think I have an email. Do you? I think so. Would that help? You want to, if you would, you want to move on to item number 22 wise? We definitely will. Um, who would ask for the board on? <laughs> definitely will. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you want to discuss that at all? <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought it would be able to go upstairs. Absolute power crap. That, <laughs> that part where he didn't have the proclamation at the beginning. That's what proclamation is. Now we got it. Well, 22 is for the Kubota, so we're so going to talk to that, that too. Let's just wait. The Kubota attachment is at $3,657. And ten or ten cents is that our cost? <coughs> Almost positive. That's our cost. They have a really big, different bid sheet. If you didn't know this, uh -huh. somebody got an Excel sheet oh, handy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same numbers. Just. Mm -hmm. It looks like a state form. Is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Let's put the same number in 17 times. Mm -hmm. um, regardless, this is one of the items that, as we have some more bike trails, especially coming around um, the Wellness Center, the high school area, Nature Park, this attachment will come in handy. Oh, it'll come in handy with some of the walkways through the Wellness Center and then you know some of the other areas. We'll have some uh, permeable pavers and some of that entry. Yes. So that's part of it. So this is snow removal without plowing? Yeah. yeah. Small amounts of snow, yeah. yes. Okay. In front of the wall of the tenders. Our number is 4,000. So I would say not to exceed 4,000, but I believe our estimated number is 3,600. That might even be that. Okay. Because we get through source well, we, we don't have to go through the whole bid process. Source well is, right. is a state of Iowa bid. Um, so if we can get not to exceed $4,027, but I believe our cost is going to be $3,657.10. So I'll move approval of the bid to purchase the broom attachment for the Kubota, not to exceed $4,000. Second. Second. We seconded to the max of four thousand dollars for the women's passport for the photo. No other questions. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Motion carries. So. Are you at twenty one? Yes. Going back to twenty one. So, what we would like to do here is ask that you give us permission to spend not to exceed twenty five thousand dollars for seating of LA Park. The reason for that is we need to get the seat down. Um, in order to have a shot at being able to play on the surface next fall. Um, this will also help us to not have to hopefully water significantly through the summer of next year, although we, we still may. But So, just the, if you haven't been out there, um, Nick's crew has done <coughs> dirt work. Uh, our hydro seeder isn't exactly equipped to do five yeah. Right, we're so, in the area. I mean, we could, yes, we could do it, but it'd take us a lot more time than, and they will do the top uh, tent to get it fine graded and get out all the fines and stuff like that. So 
when they come in, they finish grade how it should be. But we have a dome drop there with GPS so we can get within that tenth variance, but they will find grade it for us. To give you a rough idea, we were expecting somewhere about $75,000 total for this entire project. And, um, the rental of the dozer for a month is an additional nine grand, and then the twenty-five thousand that we would have here in city. So we saved half, basically, of the cost of what it would be to get this property under underway. So, um, so this includes fine grading, hydro seeding with a chemical of some nature for accelerating the growth of the seed. I take it. So yeah, for there. So part of the reason. We're bringing you this as an engineer investment for not to exceed is the next council meeting is after the seeding window. Mm -hmm. And our goal, whether pending, is that we can be ready by the, I want to say the 26th is like kind of a really late window here. So we, we would like to be done getting that tier to the two levels by the 26th. And once we're done with that, then they could come in and they see come that's the idea here. Okay. And I've even asked if, you know, if we get the upper tier done, can they come in while we're still working still with the lower tier, mm -hmm. just depending on the placement of the black dirt and stuff like that, put their hats on. Um, our goal actually is to, uh, there, there's a parking lot in this portion, so our goal is maybe we'll keep this dozer a little longer and uh, remove the black dirt and get this parking lot down to subgrade and put at least gravel in for this portion of it. So when a contractor finally comes to pour any parking area, some of the, the sub subgrade <coughs> is already completed. So to give you a, a rough idea, you know, we currently come into Elliott Park. Um, you're right. There's a road back here, and we have a parking lot here. So this parking lot would extend and then basically cut the property in half and come back down to the street that's eventually going to be there as part of, I think, the third or fourth edition. Um, it was the most efficient. It allowed us to essentially kind of create three areas of different size fields um, and then add to the additional parking plus allow an outlet both both directions. We want to get the parking down because we're concerned that if we don't that um, it will affect MK's business, people trying to park along the, the narrow path back there, things of that nature. So if we can at least get gravel in there, if we do decide to use it next fall, that uh, people will be able to at least go back there park, watch their kids play. And it'll still be a traffic kind of nightmare getting in and out of there until the, the road comes through. But Still better than not putting anything back there. I certainly don't know a lot about this, but I would think that, we, that the sooner the seeding takes place and it happens, the better the erosion control is from that time period after that, right? Correct. The word, there's matting included in this as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. In that case, I would move approval of the Elliott Park extension seeding not to exceed $25,000. Second. I'll second. Move and second it to move forward on the LA Park extension seating. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No, motion carries. What is the will of the council here on the reports? I don't know, but I subconsciously put Nick on there twice, so Matt could get up here and speak. <laughs> <laughs> and we get the police report twice. Okay. Did anybody read the collisions part? It's wrong. Noticing? It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. This has got to be wrong. That's what I there's, thought. There's no round. There's, there's no that's mention blowing, of the man. roundabout. Come on, man. We'll make up for it. Don't worry. <laughs> no, I, no, seriously. Right I, now, had I, to, it. I took it's a double one one one. Like, yeah. I could not believe wow. it. Speaking of the roundabout, we did finally, um, I did this last week get uh, estimates on some of the project costs from Ben Wilkinson of MSA. And he's a gentleman that came in Correct. and spoke with us on so That'll be coming. Yeah. I will tell you that we do not have the necessary amount of money that some of these improvements yeah. are going to do. Well, we do have yeah. one. At least not. Yeah. Change. I'm not the, I just feel the same way. I I'm feel like we need to wait like and see mm -hmm. how things shake, shake out. So, just wanted to let you know that mm -hmm. that day come back to me. I haven't uh, discussed it with staff yet. But. Yeah. <laughs>
what I don't understand on that, you know, when he came up here and he said that certain things can't go in that roundabout, how do you explain the two roundabouts in North Liberty that have these insane center uh, menageries on them? I mean, how, how do they get away with that? And yet, we have to put grass in it. I just, I'm kind of... He didn't say we couldn't. He said he would suggest against it because they'll get damaged. But I think the fact that we have, I'm not sure about the two in Mary, or North Liberty, but this is the state yeah, highway, so the DOT will have to sign off on whatever we do. Maybe it's because it's a highway yeah. versus... Yeah. Street. I mean, locally, if this were two local streets, we could do whatever we wanted to. But we will, we will have we to do that. Right. I, I'd recommend going through those two. They just recently put them on. It's just like, whoa, what the heck are they doing? Good. I'm sure they spent the bucks, too. Do you have questions for the department heads on police, public works, and public works? If you're okay, um, item L, discuss items, anything to add there, Chris, and then put it there? Do you want to um, the mayor's report? No, I <coughs> told Nick, uh, Sue and I will actually be... Actually, before we, I'm sorry, oh, before yeah. we go into that, there was, the very last item on Matt's report was this award for yeah. oh, yeah. Leslie Bloom Hall, I'm going to butcher her last name, Lunescus. 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 Yep. Um, and just congrats to her and you and your team and getting that put together. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, she she approached me about applying for that, and um, I didn't know anything about it. Obviously, she's very proud of her work that she did. She did it pro bono, and so we're extremely pleased that it came that result. Absolutely. Yeah. So where can we see this social media? Facebook page. So our Facebook page, it's Facebook all of the videos that were taken from Facebook page. So John Wright is interviewed, I'm interviewed, um, uh, Annie Hoffer's interviewed, there's several interviews there. Then it's the Facebook video that she did for the fundraising. Um, all of that um, was shared. Just via Facebook is all the methods we use. Yeah. So. Well, uh, just uh, congrats to her. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions for department heads with regard to the reports? Um, no discussion items, I assume, Chris. And as we get into the mayor's report, nothing there. Council reports. It's bypass commission this Wednesday. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's yes. Mm -hmm. The administrator's report. I read that. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, the only thing I have to add is Sue and I will be going the second meeting in October at two different conferences. Um, so Nick. And Doug is to sit up at this table and walk you through your meetings. Be if fun. Hampton isn't here for that one, we're having this. That's all right. Well, he'll be here for that one because he likes to throw in how efficient you guys are without me. Uh, <laughs> I do have a question that came up. Someone had told me that there was damage to the dog park sign in Nature Park. And I went down there for another purpose the other day. It looked like the sign, it looked fine to me. It was fixed already? It's off the highway. Off the highway down. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I think that one is gone now, right? It was uh, broken so for a while, or is it? It's, it's kind of shoved between yeah, the fences. It's, it's, oh, okay. it's been yeah, laying okay. down for okay. a long time. Oh. Okay. And while we're talking about signs, the asteroid crossing one on Main Street yeah. has been gone for a long time. Yeah. Down by the Memorial Park? Yeah, yeah. Just throwing that out there. Maybe since last school year? Something about that, yeah. Um, yeah. I have no idea how to replace that sign. Well, that's not standard? <laughs> <laughs> you guys can't weld it <laughs> and like <laughs> lathe <laughs> the thing <laughs> and all that. Come on. We don't have a Sharpie upstairs? I mean, come on. <laughs> and it's not solvable problems. Uh, uh, we're getting off task here. Uh, I, I disagree. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that should come before this meeting here? I'm going to do a full session. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I do want to say, here's the other thing. I knew there was something else. CDG. Yes, I'm sorry. Doug Steinmetz. Remember, we approved of funds to go to for Doug Steinmetz to do that assessment of the visitor center. Oh, yeah. That um, we have been awarded the grant money, the matching money for that. 
So they're going to move forward with Doug doing the assessment. And they're hoping that by the very fact that he is going to um, do the project, it will lend itself to a lot of credibility for the opportunity to get further grant money going forward. So, good. Do you know when he's going to start? Um, no, not exactly. I know they're going to be. Thank you. Any other committee reports or comments from council members? Not our next agenda item is to go into closed session. So I think we start with a. Uh, Do we have to move? Okay. Yes, we need to make a motion. Yeah, correct. Exactly. I would move that we go into closed session. I'll second. Catch that, Sue. Okay, the motion on the table is to go into closed session. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll take about two minutes to clear the room. I'm assuming if you're wondering about afterwards. Yeah. Do you want me to take the camera out? Uh, preferably. Okay. It's the same artwork. We are. 